Welcome to our presentation on anaerobic digestion as a solution to the waste management problem within the Dar es Salaam refugee camp in Chad. The agenda for today will begin by defining the problem within the Dar es Salaam refugee camp, followed by outlining the constraints and criteria for our solution. We will look at the detailed design and performance of our anaerobic digester as well as a detailed cost estimate. Social and environmental impacts will be outlined as well as a detailed life cycle assessment. Currently, the world is experiencing its highest level of displacement on record, with approximately 26 million individuals classified as refugees. It's common in refugee camps for a major cause of death to be due to unsanitary conditions arising from poor waste management practices. Each year, more than 300,000 children die from a preventable diarrheal disease that is directly caused by unsanitary conditions. Clean, sanitary living conditions and the safe removal of human waste is a basic right that all people should have access to. The Dar es Salaam refugee camp is located in the Lake Chad region of Africa and is one of the many camps dealing with the difficulties of proper waste management. The camp's current waste management practices the use of pit latrines, which pose several issues. First, there aren't enough latrines to safely support the population of the camp. Not only this, but after the latrines are filled, it's common for the waste to be removed, transported, and burned. This practice is unsafe and puts workers in the camp at risk. To keep the people living in the Dar es Salaam camp healthy, to end the unnecessary deaths caused by unsanitary conditions, it's critical that a proper waste management system is put into place. A waste management system for the Dar es Salaam camp must conform to the following constraints and criteria in order to be a safe, viable, and ideal solution. First, the solution must conform to the Sphere Handbook. Next, it must completely eliminate any handling of waste that contains pathogens. Refugees in the camp must be able to maintain and operate the solution, and the system must be compatible with the climate and soil in the Lake Chad region. The solution must minimize cost, minimize maintenance and operation requirements, minimize health risks, minimize implementation time, maximize positive externalities, and maximize scalability. The design that fits within these constraints and criteria will not only be able to save lives in the Dar es Salaam camp, but in many other places around the world. Prior to determining the constraints and criteria that our waste management solution would need to conform to, we chose four different solutions that could potentially be implemented into the refugee camp as potential solutions. The potential solutions that were analyzed were existing procedures, a wastewater treatment plant, a septic system, and an anaerobic digestion system. Overall, the anaerobic digestion system was determined to be the best solution due to its low capital costs, scalability, and positive externalities, which will be touched on further within the presentation. Next, we will talk more about the overall design of the anaerobic digestion system. The sanitary block will include 15 latrines, one anaerobic digester, one effluent storage tank, all necessary sanitary sewer, and biogas outlet. The sanitary piping system was sized to handle all maximum daily flows. If there is a backup in the system, water can be flushed down the two furthest most latrines to scour the system. The anaerobic digester was sized to accommodate the sanitary flow of a population of 180 people. It was calculated that it would need to be 9.5 meters cubed, with 7.5 meters cubed used for human waste storage and the rest used for biogas storage. The effluent tank was sized to handle one month's worth of effluent flows at 3.5 meters cubed. It should be noted that the storage tank should be emptied out regularly to avoid the effluent from festering. To go along with the design of the anaerobic digester, we also decided to create a proposed district layout that would be best serviced by our product. The design of the district was completed using all sphere and who refugee planning requirements, which can be viewed on the right hand of the slide. The district layout consists of a latrine block, communal kitchen, and 34 refugee houses. Next, I will hand it off to Jonah, who will discuss more about the positive byproducts of our design. The anaerobic digester to be implemented in Dar es Salaam camp aims to reduce the spread of pathogens while decreasing odor and producing useful byproducts. The digester will use human excreta as feedstock. Over a 30-day hydraulic retention time, bacteria already present within the waste will continue to break down organic matter as the tank will be maintained at approximately 37 degrees Celsius or body temperature. The microorganisms will convert the organic substrate to methane, carbon dioxide, and ammonia. As this is an excess exothermic process, heat will be maintained within the digester. 
The unreacted organic substrate, called digestate, will be held in a storage tank until it can be used. This nutrient-rich digestate will then be sold or applied to cropland to further crop development. The natural pressure within the digester will force digestate into the storage tank and allow gas to be naturally pressurized for cooking. This way, no moving parts or power are required to maintain the system. Of the total solids added to the anaerobic digester, approximately 21% by mass will not have been reacted to gas at the end of a 30-day period. These solids, along with any excess H2O not needed in the reaction, will exit the anaerobic digester and be held in a tank for fertilizer. It is important to note that this digestate is now almost completely pathogen-free and a valuable fertilizer. The characteristics of liquid fertilizer effluent from ADs are in line with commercial vegetable fertilizers with concentrations of 24 kilograms of nitrogen, 55 kilograms of phosphorus, and 40 kilograms of potassium per ton of organic substrate. This could potentially replace commercial mineral fertilizer completely, especially if minimal phosphorus fertilization is needed. Any solids built up in the AD will be removed on an as-needed basis. Approximately 60% of the biogas produced will be methane gas, an energy-dense fuel great for cooking or producing electricity. For every mole of feedstock, approximately 2.9 moles of CH4 will be produced, as seen by the chemical reaction here. This accounts for 718 milliliters of methane gas at standard temperature and pressure per gram of substrate. Considering our mass flow rate, the anaerobic digester will produce 12.93 meters cubed of methane at STP per day. To put this into perspective, while considering a 28% heat transfer rate to a pot of water and the thermal energy of methane, each person using the anaerobic digester will be able to boil up to 2.27 liters of water per day. This will allow for plenty of cooking fuel for members of the camp and even the ability to boil water as a method of purification under dire circumstance. A cost estimate was complete for the anaerobic digestion system as well as the entire sanitary block as a whole. It was determined that the precast anaerobic digester would cost between 150 to 300 Canadian dollars based on the size, labor costs, and shipping. The cost to construct the entire sanitary block was determined to be $11,000, which would include 15 latrines, an anaerobic digester, effluent tank, and any necessary piping. This would accumulate to approximately $61 per person if the digester serviced a population of 180 refugees. It should be noted that maintenance costs were determined to be negligible as the anaerobic digester would only require desludging every two to three years. There are a number of positive social impacts that result from our design. First and foremost, by providing a sanitary waste management system, disease will be less frequent within the camp. This will result in a high overall productivity as less time and money will be required to care for the ill. The common pit latrine was an extremely inefficient use of space. By implementing our design, space within the camp can be maximized and used for gardening or living. Lastly, research has shown that providing safe and reliable bathroom facilities can lead to the empowerment of women. Our design specifically will achieve this by reducing cooking time when camp residents use biogas instead of firewood. This will also lead to less time gathering firewood and will result in more time for community engagement. The environmental impacts of the anaerobic digester are also quite substantial. Contaminants will no longer leach into the groundwater. There will be no need to burn waste and release harmful emissions, and less firewood will need to be gathered with the implementation of biogas for cooking. Furthermore, a nutrient-rich fertilizer can assist in food production. A life cycle assessment was complete for the anaerobic digestion system. It was completed using all specified rules and standards developed by the International Organization for Standardization. An impact assessment is about being able to consider the actual effects on humans, ecosystems, and resources instead of merely tracking quantities like tons of emissions, or gallons of fuel consumed as a result of production. The goal of this assessment is to determine the impacts of materials used to construct one anaerobic digesting unit. This will be conducted using a functional unit of one kilogram of material.
In summary, one anaerobic digester can service 180 people. Each system will self-maintain an internal temperature of 37 degrees Celsius and can achieve a 99.9% .9 removal of E. coli and salmonella. This will ensure that the waste is pathogen-free and can be used for fertilizer. Biogas is also produced as a useful byproduct and will be used for cooking within the camp. The next steps in our design will be to optimize the byproduct production as well as to explore methods of gas storage. Thank you.